Okay, so uh, today I'm going to be going over uh, the basics of a respiratory assessment or the essentials of a nursing respiratory assessment. Um, so upon first uh, coming in and seeing your patient, um, of course you're going to want to introduce yourself um, and talk to them, but right away while you're doing that, you're assessing um, very quickly their level of consciousness, how they react to your, your voice, kind of gives you a clue about the, the gas exchange. Um, any sort of facial expression um, that is concerning, if they look like they're in distress at all, um, their positioning, right? If they're tripoded over and um, then you can kind of note um, any accessory muscle use um, in their neck or their uh, shoulders kind of. Um, you want to look and you can kind of see even just a crude quick assessment of their respiratory rate. So when you kind of just come approach somebody you can see right away if they're breathing a little bit faster than normal or slower without even taking that full um, respiration rate just right off the, the hop um, and right now our patient his respiratory rate looks fairly normal um, but we will actually count it just those quick things that um, in your in your quick survey of the patient um, before you delve into your your assessment that you'd want to be looking for um, so we kind of do a quick general inspection and quick conversation when we come in. Um, the, so we'll want to explain to them what we're doing. We're doing a respiratory assessment on you today. This typically would fit into um, a larger head-to-toe assessment, of course, but we're just kind of going to piece it out um, for learning purposes. Um, and there are also a list of tons um, of subjective questions you can ask the person to sort of before jumping into your assessment. Um, some of those questions would be um, answered in the chart when the person came in on admission, like sort of extensive past medical history, history of smoking, the medications they're taking, etc. cetera. Um, but some things we do actually ask sort of on a daily or regular basis um, to our patients. Um, for example, I would ask my patient if he's experiencing any sort of cough, um, new cough or change um, in cough, uh, and if he says, Yes, I would want to um, ask maybe, is it a productive cough? Uh, what does the sputum look like? Um, those sorts of things. How much sputum is there? Um, you'd want to ask them if they're experiencing any shortness of breath. He doesn't appear to be right now, um, but maybe he has been um, when he does minimal exertion, like getting up to the washroom or something. So you want to kind of um, suss out those details. Uh, and those questions could be asked on... Um, every assessment of, of that system or of the patient during their head-to-toe assessment. Um, and so you can, you can kind of go through the general inspection, the asking of those questions, um, and we're always starting from least invasive and then kind of going into more invasive. So um, now we're going to start with um, palpation. Um, so we can start anteriorly or posteriorly, and as with the whole uh, respiratory or chest assessment, um, you want to limit the amount of position changes you're doing for your patient, especially if they have mobility issues um, and sort of difficult moving around. Um, you want to try to keep them comfortable, covered, um, control the privacy in the environment as best you can, but also, like I said, limit the amount of position changes. I'm just going to open your gown a little bit here at the back, and what I'm going to do now is put my hands um, on the lower aspect of his uh, lungs, and I'm going to ask him, put my thumbs together a little bit better, ask him to take a big breath in and out. So, and again. Good, and I'm looking for symmetrical expansion there that my thumbs separate and come back together um, in a symmetrical fashion, um, not one side sort of more than the other. Um, at this point, I'm just gonna gently um, palpate your lungs, starting either, you wanna kinda do it systematically, either starting from the top or the bottom so you don't miss anything. Um, is there any areas of tenderness when I'm doing that? No. no. Okay. And you'll wanna do a similar um, palpation method anteriorly on the front. You could do that now. Um, so we could just cover you. Um, and you can turn back this way. So I'm going to ask my patient, is it okay if we take your gown down? I'm just going to listen um, and have a look at your chest here again. Sure. 
Thanks. At the front. Um, so same idea, just palpating any areas of tenderness or no, and I'm not noting any um, masses or um, lesions or anything obvious that looks um, deformed um, and he's not grimacing. The next step is listening to the chest sounds. So a couple of things before we start to actually auscultate um, his breath sounds that you want to keep in mind. Um, we're going to use sort of larger um, bony prominence landmarks to, um, for, to find our listening areas. We're going to um, proceed in a systematic fashion. Um, lots of diagrams show it this way, so you're going to um, compare sides. Um, and so you're going to move um, systematically down the lungs comparing left to right side. Um, you're going to want to listen in the intercostal spaces, not over the ribs themselves, because that will sort of obstruct the, the sounds you're hearing. Um, and you're also, the other important thing to note is you're going to want to listen to a full inspiration and expiration in each spot. Um, this is because you may note that, say, a wheeze is um, more uh, noticeable on inspiration than expiration or vice versa. Um, so you want to listen to a full inspiration and expiration in each area um, in those intercostal spaces. And then again, moving systematically. So the other thing to keep in mind um, is you maybe want to try to envision the, the lungs on the person. Um, and remember that your right lung has three lobes. Um, it has a middle lobe, whereas your left lung only has the two lobes. Um, so just trying to keep that in mind and um, based on where you're at on the person's chest, you can kind of um, approximate which lobe you're listening to uh, roughly. The other thing that you'll want to note when you're listening to the chest sounds is the type of sounds you're hearing. Are they bronchial, bronchiovesicular, or vesicular? Those are the sort of the normal sounds, but make sure you're hearing them where, um, where they are supposed to be heard. Listen now to normal vesicular breath sounds. Note the relatively soft, low-pitched character of normal vesicular breath sounds, sometimes described as a sighing or gentle rustling. These sounds are heard over most of the peripheral parts of the lung. The inspiratory phase is markedly longer than the expiratory phase. Expiration is much quieter than inspiration, and there is no pause between inspiration and expiration. The term vesicular is a misnomer. It arose from experiments performed in the 19th century suggesting that these normal sounds originated in the alveoli, then called vesicles. In fact, modern engineering concepts make it more likely that the sounds emanate from the turbulent flow of air in the lobar and segmental bronchi, not the alveoli. These are bronchovesicular breath sounds. Bronchovesicular breath sounds are a mixture of bronchial and vesicular sounds. Their inspiratory and expiratory phases are about equal in length. They are normally audible in two places. Number one, anteriorly near the main stem bronchi in the first and second intercostal spaces, and number two, posteriorly between the scapulae. They may be heard elsewhere in the presence of lung consolidation. Listen to bronchial breath sounds.
These characteristically loud, high-pitched bronchial breath sounds resemble the sound of air blowing through a hollow pipe. Their expiratory phase is louder and longer than their inspiratory phase. So the majority of the breath sounds that you hear are actually vesicular. Those are the ones in the peripheral lung fields. Um, and those are sort of the lower pitched um, sounds, um, whereas um, bronchial is heard around the trachea. And those are those a little bit harsher, higher pitched sounds. Um, and then bronchial vesicular is a mix, and that's sort of a moderate pitch sound. And those are heard sort of around the sternal borders. Um, so we'll start um, posteriorly, and again, you would just do start where was um, convenient, where the person was sitting. So we'll get you to swing your legs around again. Sorry, Justin. Um, we're going to use the diaphragm of our stethoscope. Um, and again, keeping in mind that on the um, posterior chest when you're listening, you're primarily listening to lower lobes. The upper lobes really are just in this top portion. So you're primarily listening to the um, left lower lobe as well as the right lower lobe. So I'll just show you that pattern that I was talking about. Um, so I'll just ask him to take a deep breath in and out. Good, thank you. And again. And note, I'm avoiding listening right on the scapula, um, and we're going to move down systematically. Good. And you want to make sure your patient doesn't feel dizzy at all. You're feeling okay? Good. Good. And we'll move out into the periphery a little bit here. Good. And you could do this um, now or when you listen anteriorly, um, but we also will want to get a good uh, listen to the lateral aspects of the lungs um, because that's where we can really hear um, the right uh, middle lobe well. Um, and you kind of get a picture of those more peripheral aspects. Um, so we'll turn you around. And again, while you're listening, um, you're listening for any adventitious sounds like crackles or wheezes or strider, um, any decreased air entry, any atelectasis. Um, those are sounds that if you do note, you want to take special note of where you're hearing them, um, how intense are they, are they worse on inspiration or expiration, um, that sort of thing. So we'll do a similar listening pattern anteriorly. Um, and anteriorly, you'll want to keep in mind that this is where you're listening to the upper lobes and middle lobes. So, can you take a deep breath in and out? Good. And again. Good. And again. And again. And this is maybe a good time then to do some lateral listening. Um, so you can ask the person to hold their arm up or put it kind of across their chest. Um, however, just to kind of keep it out of the way of where you're going to be listening. Um, so we're listening on the right side. So this has about four listening areas so that you can sort of capture that um, right middle lobe. So if you could take some big breaths in and out again. You start the, at the apex of the axilla here. Sorry. And again, where is our middle lobe and our lower lobe? Good. Thank you. And similar on the left side, um, but again, there's only the two lobes, so you, there's not as many um, places to listen. There's only three, um, but you do the same pattern, um, deep breath in and out, and sort of note any of those adventitious sounds. Um, or any um, sounds that you shouldn't be hearing. You really should only be hearing vesicular sounds in those area areas. Um, so we'll cover you up. Um, and that's pretty much the, the basics of our respiratory assessment.